Hello everybody, Richard Owen here at Owen Automotive and we're back on my junk E-Type engine. Hopefully gonna start assembling this thing pretty soon, but we're still in cleanup phase. Yeah, next gotta do these cylinder walls. See what they look like here, they're quite dirty if I get my light right. Uh, oh, there you go. You can see what they look like there. Gonna really refresh this surface for the new piston rings. Yeah, and how we're gonna do that is with this ball hone. You can see the dingleberries there on the ball hone. Yeah, they'll really scratch the surface and hopefully we'll get a nice cross hatch in there somewhere between 20 and 40 degrees. So yeah, I'll show you what that looks like. I'll drop a little oil in these cylinders and we'll go from there. Okay, gonna do an even amount in each bore and keep on going until they shine nice and clean. Okay, let's have a closer look at what the home did. You can look in this cylinder wall here. You can see the cross hatch, but it still has some dark areas. It isn't totally uniform. And I think what we're looking for here is a totally uniform cylinder wall. Yeah, I was jerking pretty hard on the hone, and that's because it spins pretty fast, and you have to put you have to jerk it in pretty you have to jerk it in and out pretty fast to get that 20 to 40 degrees. Okay, I'm done jerking it. Have a look at that cross hatch there in that cylinder. It's nice and even. No dark and light areas, so that's exactly what I want. Looks pretty good on all cylinders. Yes, yeah, so the next step is going to be to clean this as best I can. Uh, really try to get all that abrasive material out of the cylinder wall, and then we can start assembly. All right, everybody, here's the crankshaft for our junkie type engine. If you remember in the last episode, we took out these sludge plugs here. They filled these holes and we cleaned that out. And that was really in preparation to give it to the machine shop so they could hot tank it and really clean all the oil off the crankshaft. One thing that process doesn't do is clean off any of the rust blooms. So you really get a good indication of where this crankshaft was rusting and where it wasn't. So all the bearing surfaces here are totally shiny, no rust whatsoever, which is really fantastic. At the end here, near the main cap, this is where that rope seal goes that we just installed. And you can see there's a bit of rust in pitting here, so I'll really want to clean up that area really well. Uh, it's going to be a simple process to clean this off. All I'm going to use is this Scotch-Brite pad, really go aggressive on it, and then clean it out with some solvent. So I'll go ahead, do that, then I'll get back to you guys. All right, here she is, one clean crankshaft. Yeah, that was really a lot of uh, manual labor on the bench, but I'm pretty happy with the result. Really got in there in these bearing surfaces and cleaned out any rust. And yeah, they came out really looking superb without much effort, which is really great. I was really looking into two other options with this crankshaft. One was wash it with muriatic acid, which would totally wash the rust right off and then clean it afterwards with water. But what that would do is corrode these bearing surfaces. And I didn't want to do that because I wasn't remachining these surfaces. So that's really only an option if you were remachining the crankshaft. The other option is sandblast. And that's a big mess. I didn't want to get sand in these oil ways here. And I didn't want to get the potential to get any sand in the engine whatsoever. So that option was out. So just clean it up by hand. Pretty happy with the result. Really cleaned off this surface here. There is still some pitting. You can see right in here where the cork seal is going to be. I think it'll be fine for a cork seal. But if that was like a neoprene seal, that would definitely need some work. All right, we're getting close. Got everything laid out nicely. Got the bearings in the block there. These are a male bearing. You can see the box here. I don't know if that's the part number or if it's right here, but nice looking bearing set. I uh, got the thrust washers in here on the center cap. My dad said to make sure that you put the uh, bearing surface out with the grooves on it. We saw one car that had it in the wrong way, so like this, and that uh, hardened steel just ate right into the crankshaft, so don't make that mistake. 
Got all the main cap bolts here. So yeah, the next thing we're gonna do is put in the crankshaft, torque it down, and see what we get. Okay, that's pretty good torque on those babies. Let's see if we can spin her around. Let's see, let's try it. Is it gonna turn? Look at that! She's rotating. Awesome. That's great, eh? Yeah, that's good, yeah. Yep, so I took two caps off, two main caps, got the plastic gauge in there gonna torque down on them but not gonna turn them around this time and see what we get okay torque these babies up to about 80 stretch the bolts a bit but we get an accurate reading so I'm just gonna take off this cap here Let's see what we got there it is smushed out and the gauge is on the cover here so we got it's in millimeters here. I guess I gotta flip it over. It's looking like two thou. We got two thou, Dad. Two thou, that's good. Let's go over here. Move you guys over. Got the other test. Move you up a bit. No, I'll just leave it there. Okay, got the other one here. Come on, this is main cap number two. You can see WAQ2. It's looking about the same. Yeah, got two thou there. Lovely. Okay, we're in spec. Awesome. All right, next up is these crankshaft plugs, sludge plugs, whatever you want to call them. Had to clean out the threads in there. I noticed it was just a little bit of sediment in the threads, so clean those out. And gonna put the new plugs in. They're here on the bench. Just give them a break clean because I'm gonna put them in with a bit of red Loctite. You can't have any oil on any surfaces for red Loctite to work. You can see the bit we're gonna use right there. Yeah, so it's gonna be pretty simple. Just wind them in there. Red with some red Loctite, peen them, and uh, we'll move on. All right, going along pretty good here, except for one plug hole. You can see my problem right there is that when they originally put this crankshaft together, they put the plug in really deep and then peened the threads over instead of the plug. So the best solution would be to get a really strong bottoming tap and clean out these threads. Unfortunately, right here, right now, I don't have access to that tap. So what I'm going to do is try to make, force the plug in, and then take the plug out, clean up all the metal shards, and then throw it in with Loctite. Okay, I'm going to, I put some copper paste on the plug. My dad said that might be a good idea. And I'm just going to try to wear the plug into the hole. Uh, this is in lieu of tapping it, which is probably the better thing to do. I don't know how deep this is going to go. It doesn't start very nice either because I've already... Well, there we go. So that's on the thread now. Now let's see how far I can take this. I'll try it first with just the, the light impact, I would say. Ah, 
Yeah, it looks like it's going down far enough. Let's get the heavy impact on there next. It's definitely not as deep as it was originally, but I think that's enough to clear. Oh, this is a big boy. Okay, come on, baby. Yeah, that's going to be it. That's going to be all the way. So I'm going to take that out, clean it all up, get all those medical particles out of there. And then lock. Oh, oh, careful. Don't want to fling around medical par metal particles. Okay, great. I'm in business. Put some Loctite onto this baby. There we go. A little bit of Loctite. And let's drive her home for the final time. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, started by hand here. Yeah, she's going to go in there. Get the look. Yeah, there we go. That's great. Happy with that. She's in. She's not going anywhere. I'll put a pin on her just for permanency's sake. Okay, it's time for the rope seal, the rear main seal of the engine. You can see the new rope seals here. I think these are impregnated with graphite. That's what my dad says. And we're going to follow the steps listed in the Jaguar 420 manual. These steps aren't listed in the E-Type manual for some reason, but it is the same process. And what's really critical here is inserting the seals in and fitting them with this tool, the sizing tool. Uh, this is one that we had made up. It's not an official tool, but it gets the job done. And this is really how you do the job correctly. So we'll show you how that, how that works. Okay, first up. Just going to tap these seals and make them a little thinner. Just take a hammer and just tap it in a little bit with a hammer. They said the hammer handle actually. That's what they say in the manual. I was thinking of the head actually, but the handle would be good too, I guess. Oh, like that? Yeah, that's good. Just seat it all the way in there. Otherwise, it will be too short. Yeah, it's in all the way there. But I think that's protruding a little too much, so we're going to have to cut that off. I think what we'll do is we'll bolt the main cap on. We'll just take the two in the lower half and just see how, how it fits. Okay. And then we can cut it off once we see what the proper size is. Squish it down with it. You're going to squish down one half. Yeah. Holy. Okay, we're going to pre-size just one half and see about the cut that we have to make because I think the instructions on the manual would give you a rope seal that was already a perfect dimension but that's not what we've been provided here. Okay just fitting the rope seal into the other half of the cap here. This can actually be put on the wrong way around. It could go on this way too. All oh, right, we've seen that before. The last one we took apart it was reversed on it. Yeah, so this is amazing. It still works the other way. So this is the cutout. Yeah, so the cutout goes into the engine. Let the oil flow back down through. There. Ah, the cutout goes towards the cap yeah, there. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Okay, just tight. Just tightened it down. Next step will be to actually take it back off and put install the crank for the final time. 
Just give this tool a couple of turns. Okay, after tightening it down and getting the fit correct, took it all back apart again, crank landed for the final time. And we're just gonna put that cap on with just a bit of silicone to get a nice seal. My dad was saying you don't wanna put too much though because we don't want any silicone sealer filling that groove there in the crankshaft that siphons it all back to that slinger. That's a slinger, right? This surface right here, yep. this high, that slings that oil up into that area you were showing me. It prevents the oil also from hitting it. It's a deflector. Yeah, deflector. I think the oil will ride along this surface up to the point and fling off. So it gets less chance to be near this rope seal area. Okay, just dropped a little oil down this way here. My dad filled it up and totally has got this thing running free. Yeah, that's lovely. All right, made some good progress. Got the crankshaft tightened down. Main caps all tightened down with these bolts. Opted not to use the lock tabs. Uh, my dad thought that just stretching these bolts was good enough. Those lock tabs are kind of old hat technology. Yeah, the rope seal went in. You guys saw that process. And the crankshaft, she's still turning. So yeah, really good, really happy with the progress. In the future episodes, we'll be putting in the pistons, putting in the distributor drive right here, and the oil pump, which sits right here, and then maybe the oil pan. Yeah, so we're well on our way. Yeah, awesome. So that's it for this episode of My Junk E-Type Engine. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.